Hey there, fellow van builders. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jason, the van teacher. In today's lesson, we're covering how to add a simple 15 amp shore power inlet to your van's electrical system. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. It's the best way to stay updated with all of my latest videos. This video will cover how to install the inlet to the outside of your van and how to connect it to a battery charger or other AC loads inside your van. Note that this video only covers 15 amp inlets wired to a run of a few outlets and not 30 amp inlets wired to inverter chargers. Although most of the installation is similar, their purpose and use is a bit different. So let's get right to it. First, select a suitable location for installing your inlet. You will want to take into consideration the part of your van that you want to drill a hole through and where you want to have the wiring enter your van. Most inlets are either installed on the side closest to your battery bank or on the back bumper area. You can even locate the inlet underneath your van and nearly out of sight. My preference is to install the inlet on the back of the van just below the taillight. My reason is simple and practical. First, I didn't want to drill a large hole through the exterior side metal. The trim panel plastic could be more easily replaced if I make a mistake or decide for some reason to remove the inlet. And second, if I forget to unplug, the cord will pull itself straight out rather than to the side as I drive away. You are installing the inlet on the Ram Promaster taillight trim panel. You have several options on how to bring the wire into your van. The easiest is to slip the wire through the pressure relief vent opening and right into the rear pillar. The vent is covered by a rubber flap, so you may want to cover the opening with metal screen or wire mesh to help keep bugs and critters out. Alternatively, you can drill a small hole into the rear pillar behind the taillight, use a rubber grommet to protect the wire, and seal around the wire with spray foam, silicon, or lap sealant. Now that the inlet is installed, it's time to wire it into your system. You will want to use 10 gauge, three conductor, stranded marine grade wire. The question of whether to use stranded marine wire versus solid residential wire for AC wiring is often debated. But if electrical codes specifically addressed AC wiring in a van or RV, it would likely specify stranded wire and outlets designed to accept such wire. Rather than giving you my personal opinions on this topic, I will leave it as a best practice recommendation to use marine grade stranded wire properly terminated to be used with automotive AC outlets. Whatever wire you choose, be sure to add protection wherever the wire passes over sharp edges, avoid bending the wire at tight angles, and secure the wire with plenty of zip ties to reduce movement. To begin wiring the inlet to your system, first connect the three colored wires to the back of the inlet. Black is the hot wire, white is neutral, and green is ground. Next, route the wire to your first AC outlet. The first outlet in your run should be a GFCI outlet. If you plug your van into a GFCI protected outlet, this protection carries into your van. Since most outdoor outlets are on GFCI protected circuits, you are likely also protected by the outlet you plug into. My first outlet is in the garage area of the van and I use it for an AC battery charger. At the end of this video, I will go over the items you plug into your system and how to ensure you are not overloading it. When wiring your first outlet, you will use a parallel connection so that you can extend the circuit to a second outlet. This means you will connect the incoming hot wire, black, to the right side, brass screw, the incoming neutral wire, white, to the left side, silver screw, and create a pigtail for the green ground wire and connect it to the ground screw. 
The wire heading out to your second outlet will be wired to the outgoing brass hot screw, outgoing silver neutral screw, and connected to the green ground pigtail. You can then connect your second outlet the same way as the first and continue the run to as many outlets as needed. The other important consideration will be the length and gauge of your outdoor rated extension cord. This cord will run from the outdoor outlet you've plugged into to the inlet on your van. Make sure it is rated to carry the amperage of the circuit and use the shortest extension cord you can. Basically, use common sense here and don't overload the circuit the same way you should not overload circuits in your home, garage, or workshop. In my three outlet shore power system, I have a Victron smart battery charger that draws 7.5 amps plugged into outlet number one, our TV plugged into outlet number two, and the refrigerator plugged into outlet number three. The total amperage, if all of the devices are on at the same time, is less than 9 amps. Occasionally, I may plug in a 1000 watt electric heater, but I make sure that nothing else is plugged in at the same time as it alone can draw over 9 amps. If you would like additional information on van electrical systems, check out my camper van electrical overview video or for more detailed tutorials, check out my videos on installing solar power, DC to DC chargers, quick electrical tips, and a complete guide to DC circuit wiring. If you would like to know how much my electrical system cost or any other budget related items, check out my video on how much our 2023 Ram Promaster cost to build. Also, check out the links in the description below for more information on any of the items mentioned in this video. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe for more content, and share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below.